Hey everyone, this is Cameron with Motion Science, and I'm here today to show you a workflow hack that I use on almost every project that I work on. Uh, when it comes to being a slightly longer project or a very render intensive project. Uh, so for this project, this is one I just recently finished up for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, it's a project I was uh, asked to freelance on. So uh, this project is the actual rendering section starts here, finishes here, just over four, like 407 frames. It's 24 frames a second. Uh, so that's what, 16, 17 seconds long, I believe. My math might be off, but uh, anyways, not too long of a timeline, uh, but the actual rendering, uh, the project is, is somewhat intensive on the effects and what it's doing. So the rendering takes quite a while uh, to get through. So this hack is for rendering projects uh, when you're dealing with clients, which is all the time, uh, but a client that has a quickly approaching deadline and you're coming down to the wire and you know that the project's 90% there, but there's that extra 10% that the client is going to have last minute changes, uh, things that need to be done very quickly at the last minute uh, before the project actually goes out the door. Essentially, I render the, the sequence out as one long, long sequence, and then I fill in the blanks with uh, last minute tweaks that are requested by the client. How do I do that? Well, I just go to my sequence. I go to composition, add to render queue. My render queue has uh, created an output here. My output module probably looks different than yours. This is one that I've set up as a default, uh, but it doesn't matter. You just click on the output module. And instead of QuickTime, we want to render a PNG sequence. Uh, we can change things here like millions or trillions of colors. If you have an alpha channel, you can also do that as well. I don't have an alpha channel. This is only an 8-bit sequence, so I'm going to leave that millions of colors. I'm going to click OK. I'm then going to click on this output 2 to set my PNG sequence up. And here I have my folder structure set up. I've created a folder called PNG underscore seq, seq for sequence. Uh, I'm gonna leave, this is the composition name. These uh, number signs represent the frame numbers. So when we render out a PNG sequence, if we're at frame 407, 407 will automatically be filled in here, 00407, so I know what frame it is. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. I'll click save. And I'll just go over here and click render, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I'm back and the render finished. And what I'm gonna do now is just to prep uh, for a final render is I'm going to import back into my project the PNG sequence I just rendered, which is right here. As you can see, we started at frame nine and ended at frame 407. And like I said, the uh, number signs equate to the frame numbers here the sequence so I know at any time what frame I'm on. Here's frame 34 and so on. So I'll select the first frame. I'll click on options to make sure that PNG sequence is selected. If it's not selected, when I click open, it'll only open the first image. But by selecting PNG sequence, it's going to open the entire sequence. Bring it into After Effects and you can see here that it's defaulted to 30 frames per second. As I mentioned, Previously, the frame rate for this is 24 frames a second. So I'm going to go to interpret footage, main. I'm going to change it from 30 to 24. And then all I have to do is just drag this sequence into a new composition. And boom, here's my entire sequence ready to go out the door. So now I've got a base render completed. So when my client comes back to me with any last minute changes in the final hour, all I have to do is render specific sections of the PNG sequence and they'll update automatically here in the sequence. Let me show you how I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go back into my composition here. And let's say for this particular part of the sequence, my, the clients come back and they said, hey, uh, you know, his name's not spelled right. Well, we know it's spelled right. But for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and change his name. And let's just make it K-Y-R-Y instead of I-E. So we'll go into the composition here. 
I'm going to change it here, make it a Y, and there we are back in the composition. So now all we have to do is render the section from here, let's say to here, as it goes away. So I'll set my beginning and my end uh, render points and you can see they're here. And let me show you a little trick I have as well, which is a little hack I have as well, which is something, it's called the background render. This is a plugin you can get from aescripts.com. Uh, it's been around for many, many years. It's an amazing plugin I have used for as long as it's been out. What it does is it enables me to click this button, render what I need to render, but continue to work inside of After Effects. So if I just need to update this little sequence right here, and then let's say I need to also update uh, this Nance section and take the E off of his name. So I have two sections to update. Well, I wanna go ahead and get this section rendering since I've already fixed it. So what I'm gonna do is just go into my background renderer. I'm gonna click background renderer. It's gonna give me an error that there's nothing in the render queue. I better go back to that, set up a PNG sequence. It's going to the same output, so it's just going to overwrite the sequence uh, specific to this change. And I'll just go back, click background render again. It needs to save, and boom, there it goes. I'm on a Mac. It's uh, launched terminal. Uh, terminal is going to start the sequence of rendering. And I think this only works on a Mac. Uh, so if you're on a PC, sorry guys, but there you go. See, it started with frame 46. It's going to continue on. You're going to see it's, there's 46 where I started it. It's going to end right here at 93. So now that's rendering. While it's rendering, I need to go down here. Let's just say I need to change this section right here and boom, boom, boom. I've made my changes. I'm ready to render this section now. So all I have to do is Click on render, background render again. Boom, it's gonna launch a second terminal window. You can see there's the first render going and here's the second render starting up. And the great thing about this is I can uh, set up to eight of these uh, background render processes going. I've got an eight core machine, so it's gonna go and I'm gonna to continue to, to work away. And uh, I'm gonna come back here in just a minute. Oh, actually, before I do that, uh, let me show you something cool about Background Render as well. Under Advanced Settings, it's a simple plugin, but if you click Advanced Settings, all these other options are gonna open up where it has priority, if it's a low, medium, or high priority rendering, uh, meaning how much uh, of your uh, processing power of your computer is gonna take. Uh, the memory usage, multi-processing, this is the coolest part to me, post render actions. If I click configure and I open it up, what this does is I can tell background renderer to notify me when the rendering is done. So if I need to set off a whole bunch of renders, I can step away from my computer and I know I'll get a notification that, hey, your renders are done, come back, get back to work. How I do that is I use uh, typically an SMS text alert or an iPhone alert. Uh, I'm telling it when the renderer is done at the end, I put in my phone number here, I, I'm with AT&T, I say, hey, text me a message. Um, click Save Settings. Well, I don't have a phone number entered, so I'm gonna hit Cancel, but awesome, awesome feature, love it. So let me go back really quick to the terminal. This first section is now done, and there you go, the second section has finished. So the great thing about this is, I will go back into my PNG sequence, boom, this is already updated. It was K-Y-R-I-E, now it's a Y. If you notice that the PNG sequence is not updating, all you have to do is go back to your PNG sequence in the project window and hit reload footage, and it'll automatically update for you. So now I've got all the changes made. Let's say that this render was an originally an hour long render. Well, now it's gonna take like two minutes to render because it's a PNG sequence. Super quick, all I have to do is go to Composition, Add to Render Queue, say it's a ProRes 422, 
Hit my output. Boom. Hit render. And there it goes. It renders out the final sequence super quick. So that's what I got for you today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, leave a comment below and let me know if you learned something new in this video, if you uh, already knew this, or if there's something else you want me to show you guys how I work or, or tips and tricks for you. So let me know in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Cameron and this is Motion Science.